How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. As I was cleaning my hobby mat this week, I realized that this channel needs more of something. And that something is dinosaurs. I found this awesome model kit at my local hobby store, decided to bring it home and make something crazy with it. My first plan was to recreate that scene from Five Nights at the Museum, where the dinosaur comes to life and attacks the overnight security guard. But I decided to go with the obvious second choice and make it the centerpiece of a giant wild western battle. Like all of Bondi's snap kits, this one was super fun to build and easy to snap together. The kits are designed to hold together without glue, but I stuck the pieces together with plastic cement so I could handle it a little more roughly, wouldn't have to be concerned about it falling apart. After assembling the rib cage, I slapped on the shoulders, the hips, and the tail, and I temporarily put the dinosaur on its standoff, threw on its legs and head. This little dinosaur was definitely a fun kit to build, and it would look good on a shelf, but the one thing I don't like about it is that it's stuck in this midair squat. A little more articulation would have been nice in my opinion. Luckily for me, and for how I'm going to be using it, it doesn't matter. I removed some of those pieces that I had just added, and I clipped one side of the rib cage like little fingernails. And by little fingernails, I mean huge fingernails. I then grabbed a sheet of MDF to act as the sturdy base that I would build the rest of the diorama on top of. To build up the terrain, I threw down some XPS insulation foam, and I cut it to size. I then glued the XPS to the MDF with some BSI FSCA till everything looked A-OK. -okay. I then shaved down the foam layers into a more natural looking shape using a combination of a hot wire and utility knife. I smoothed everything out finally with a butane torch and I was wearing a respirator the whole time and I had a window open as well. I glued some pre-made plaster rocks against the vertical surfaces to create some little cliffs and after that it was time to apply terrain paste. I mixed up some modeling compound, I applied it around all the detailed areas like the rock surfaces and the T-Rex. For the rest of the open spaces, I used a combination of plaster, Mod Podge, and water. I used the modeling compound around the detailed areas because it tends to be a little easier to control and smooth out, while the plaster Mod Podge mix covers a lot of ground very quickly and could be spread around with a brush. I added some texture to the terrain in the form of pebbles and sand, mostly built up at the base of the slopes and collected in the low areas. I sealed it all with watered down glue and isopropyl alcohol, and I left it to dry. I've been asked many times if there was a civil war in this alternate history, and the answer is maybe. But these soldiers don't fight for the north or the south, nor do they fight for the East and the West. These are hired guns. In this wild imaginary West, many trophy hunters and monster hunters are fossil collectors as well. Fossils like this T-Rex will fetch a very hefty sum at auction back East, which makes them a very hot commodity. Trophy hunters often don't have the means to protect a large site on their own, which often requires them to hire out private armies to make sure it stays safe while they're doing the digging and the transporting. A trophy this size attracts a lot of attention, and when that's the case, it's not uncommon for multiple hunters with their private armies to show up at the same time, or for one to show up and try and take the claim from another. And that's exactly what's happening in this diorama. After the armies were done, it was time to move back to the base, which by this point had dried, so it was time to prime and begin painting. I started by painting on the shading, onto the dinosaur, as well as all the deepest parts and recesses of the rock formations. After that, I started layering on different earthy colors and picked out the high points with lighter and lighter paint. I then went over the top with a dusting of a pale sand color and I gave a dark bone colored wash to the skeleton. 
I dabbed off the wash with a paper towel as I went to create a stain that tinted the bones and stayed concentrated in just the deepest point. I applied a wash to a few areas on the terrain as well and tied it all together at the very end with a final coat of dust. The next step was to add some foliage. This fossil is located in Remnant Gulch, a place well known for its abundance of fossils. My patrons helped me pick the name. After flash floods, new remains are often revealed causing an influx of activity. Because there was recently some rain, I wanted to have a little bit of plant life even though this is generally a pretty dry place. Here you can see me using a vacuum cleaner and an old sock to save as much static grass as possible. To add some variation to the green areas, I sprinkled on different colors of flocking and then I stuck on some tufts of grass and little bushes made with things I got from Diorama Persepe. After all the plants were in place, it was time to glue on the armies. While I'm gluing all these little people on, I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons who help me get these videos out as often as I do. You guys are the best. The last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 3.0, and after that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.